What is up, Felix Lair here for Thomas Synthesizers and I've always been a big fan of tape delays, more precisely tape delay emulation because really it is usually too much of a hassle for me. Um, anyways, over time I've played around with a lot of different options, pedals, VST plugins, etc. Um, that are all trying to serve the same purpose. So um, yeah, today I'm going to show you some of the tools that I've used and uh, what I like and don't like about them and um, yeah, how I think you can get the most out of the certain characteristics that uh, yeah all of these tools offer. All right, so here we are in my Ableton, and now let me show you why I love tape delay so much, or tape delay emulation, um, and why I often prefer it over regular delays. So here I have this dry drum loop. And now let's take this little piece here and apply first a classic modern digital delay. This is Replica XT by Nef Instruments, one of my favorite delay plugins for most use cases uh, because it actually has five different versions, including a tape delay. But first let's start with the modern delay here and see what it does to the signal. I guess most of you will already know. This is it. Yeah, nothing special. It takes the signal, multiplies it in a rhythmical fashion, plays it back again, but uh, it progressively gets quieter depending on your feedback setting, um, Yeah, which is going to determine the amount of repetitions basically. And if we were to now take the signal, put it next to the initial signal and adjust for the volume difference, what we would see is that these are perfectly identical because they're perfectly digitally reproduced and um, usually unless I have some very scientific thing in mind that I want to achieve that's not my personal preference I want some irregularities so that's why I introduce tape delay emulation so now let's change it up into tape mode and here are now some uh, settings that we can use to um, control some of these vintage tape style characteristics because what would a tape delay do? You would take a signal and um, in order to achieve this effect of reproducing the sound in a rhythmical fashion it would be recorded onto tape onto a little loop and then played back again and again and again from this little tape loop and each consecutive time uh, there would be some loss of information and it would um, yeah, be inconsistent in some ways so now let's uh, for example increase the tape age, saturation and wow and flutter and listen what happens. Yeah, you can already see it. There's more than just a volume difference between these signals. Um, actually the wow and flutter effect it manipulates the pitch, uh, it simulates how the tape used for the delay would not be running perfectly consistently, um, altering the pitch of the sound and the timing. Tape H is basically like a progressive low pass filter um, because the signal is going to degrade and lose especially high frequency information first. So if I increase it to 100% you're going to listen you're going to hear the difference immediately yeah, it becomes darker and darker and saturation of course adds tape saturation distortion basically from overdriving the tape with too much of an input gain um, yeah but of course here in this plugin we also have um, loads of advanced controls to control everything even more precisely, for example shuffle 
and feel and accent, they are going to, um, I usually use one, two, three percent, something like this, a very subtle range here, um, which you can use to make the signal either drag uh, behind or rush um, so that it's a bit too early, shuffle introduces some randomness and accent is going to, I think, um, yeah, accent in this case the offbeat by a tiny percent, the offbeat repetitions. Yeah, and now this is already much more organic because obviously a tape delay wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to perfectly sync it, so you would manually tune it in and then usually this would result in some sort of a non-perfect alignment with the rest of the composition. Um, then here this is the stereo section where we can introduce a delay between the left and right signal up to 25 milliseconds. Why this range? Because this is the range of repetitions um, that we don't really perceive as individual impacts. So um, if we have a delay below 25 milliseconds from left to right signal, we're going to perceive it as a very wide stereo signal instead of two signals. So listen now what happens once I increase this. Yeah, I can also control the difference, the ratio here between the mono and stereo part of the signal. And as you can see here, it also has a noise setting. Um, anyways, one of the additional things that I really love to do with tape delays is to sort of use them like an instrument because if you crank up the feedback a lot, uh, it's going to result in a sound that you've heard on a billion records and that I really like a lot. CPU is having some problems here, but you get the idea. Um, once you start to introduce a very high feedback on a tape delay and you get into a certain amount of repetitions, um, it pretty much doesn't matter anymore what was the initial impact signal because after 10 repetitions or so, um, uh, it's going to sound the same anyways. <laughs> it's, it's always going to be pretty much the same sound. Um, and I don't know, it's just the sound of a tape delay, I guess. And you can use this in brilliant ways um, as effect sounds for transitional purposes um, uh, to do build-ups uh, of your tracks, whatever. And of course, when you play around with the decay time, uh, the delay time, this is going to affect the pitch because that's one of the limitations of using an analog tape uh, for delay is that you cannot change the um, speed of the tape without also changing the pitch of the signal that's on the tape at the same time. Um, but yeah, one of the great things of having this as a plugin is of course that uh, you could now also automate all of these settings and just draw the movement into an arrangement with a high amount of precision. Um, anyways, for this particular effect, I'm going to show you a different version of this effect by Arturia, because of course the definitive um, tape delay is the RE201 by Roland, the Space Echo, the legendary. Um, and this is Arturia's emulation of it. Let's first hear the incoming signal here, which is this loop I prepared from the Arturia CS80 plugin. So that's the dry signal. Now let's introduce some delay. think for some reason this plugin it seems to be nailing some of the characteristics of this effect 
more closely. Just uh, some information about the basic layout. There's three tape heads being simulated here, as you can see indicated by, uh, by these LEDs here. And these are the settings. They're just various combinations of the individual heads. Yeah, as you can see while I'm changing it here, the LEDs change. And um, also worth mentioning is that it also features a reverb unit. Yeah. And here we can control the echo and the reverb individually. Yeah. And it also has some advanced settings if we open it up. So here we have input equalization, self explanatory. You can yeah, equalize the incoming signal um, before it hits the effect. And here you also have some wow and flutter and motor inertia effects to make it more wobbly. Which I think, especially with melodic stuff like this, always is a particularly beautiful effect if you have some flutter and some pitch inconsistency going on because it just matches, it, yeah, makes for some uh, beautifully rich harmony. That's it for the Arturia. And I think for most usual uh, delay purposes, I'm gonna prefer the replica because I feel like I have a bit more control over the uh, exact effect and the stereo um, uh, placement and all of that. But maybe that's just because I've used it a, a lot more. But when it comes to actually emulating the exact characteristics and creating these soundscapes that are just uh, this like tape delay feedback madness, then I prefer this one because I think it sounds closer to the uh, original Roland and yeah, it's better at achieving this aesthetic basically. And then another alternative would of course be to opt for a hardware version like the RE202 by Boss, which has uh, some advantages when it comes to performing pretty much. Uh, in, a, in, in a production I would always opt for the plugin because it's more um, practical but if you're performing live or it's very important for you to inject an emotion through the movement of the um, faders, it's uh, obviously prefer preferable to have a hardware version because it just yeah uh, draws you into the sound more and especially on stage. If you want direct control over a tape delay effect, there's pretty much no other option than opting for a hardware version. <laughs>